It's okay, <laughs> you're good. Some gemstones will not tolerate this kind of heat exposure, and they might crack or kablooey. Whoa, oh my god, it's gone. Hey guys, welcome to another unboxing. So today I woke up and I chose violence. We are going to be committing some gemological felonies today. We talk a lot about the properties of gemstone, the physical ones especially, hardness, toughness, cleavage, fracture, things like that. Today we're going to be taking a look at some gemstones that have some physical weaknesses, and we're going to be exploiting them in an expose of what exactly not to do with your gemstone collection. First things first, some safety. The gemstones we'll be looking at today will have some explosive reactions. So for those reasons, we've adopted some protection gear. Put it back on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> beaker, I like beakers. They're um, <laughs> neat. Uh, I think I know where this is going. So we're gonna be playing with the stability of gemstones. Stability of a material is the ability for that material to remain unchanged in the presence of extreme temperatures, typically heat, and then light and chemical attack. Okay, Brittany, so we've got a beaker with very cold water, mm -hmm. and we've got a little case with some gemstones that we will be... Exploiting. Yeah, we'll be bothering these stones today. So the first one we're gonna bother is this center one right here. It's a faceted quartz. What we're gonna be starting with is a long neck, whatever they call it, lighter. You've probably got one of these in your house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flame sear this quartz for about 60 seconds, a minute or so, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna drop it into this cold water. So the quartz is going to resist this moderate heat perfectly fine, I think. Yeah. But what's going to give it trouble is when we switch it from extremely hot to extremely cold. Are you ready, Brittany? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Pop. It begins. It's okay, <laughs> you're good. But see, this is why we've got our goggles on today because uh, some gemstones will not tolerate this kind of heat exposure and they might crack or kablooey. This guy's getting real blackened, real charred. We're it's, at zero is seconds. It's zero okay. seconds. Okay, hopefully our beaker survives this transition as well. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. Oh. Ooh, it made a lot of noise, it lost a lot of soot. Oh, we got some crackling. Do we? We got some, oh yeah, we got oh, some crackling in that's there. that's a lot of crackling. Do you see that? I do. Okay, so we've got our quartz here. Ooh. Look at that. It's crackling. So, oh wow, look at that. So what's happened after we heated the stone for a long time and then rapidly cooled it, is it has fractured completely and thoroughly throughout the body of the stone. The crystal lattice of the quartz under the heat expanded a little bit and then under the rapid abrupt change to cold, contracted. And it's just shattered internally. So the quartz is still in one piece, it's still intact, yeah. but it is full of breakages. This is a common practice to create crackled quartz. All of the internal fractures, a lot of them reach up to the surface of the gemstone mm -hmm. so that if you want to dye it, it becomes more readily available to accept those dyes so that it can go into the stone and make it appear whatever okay. color that you want to um, color your cool, quartz cool. as. So Rob, yeah, what's next? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. We're gonna start with copal, a pearl, this one has a little hole in it, and a very teeny tiny little opal. So copal is like amber junior. It's like young amber. It's not quite old enough mm -hmm. to be regarded as amber. It's still very old yes. and very much solidified resin. Copal is about two million years or younger, and then anything above two million years is considered to be amber. If we're continuing on with heat, these three materials are able to easily craze when exposed to high heat. So we will be re-enlisting this little guy here, and we'll start with the copal. We're gonna give it another 60 seconds, I think. So, three, two, one. Ah. Oh my gosh, look at the bubbling. Oh, oh my gosh, look at the bubble. Oh. Do you smell that? Oh, it's oh, on no. fire. Uh, uh, <laughs> you ready? Uh, All right, let's quench it. <laughs> put it in the water, put it in the water. <laughs> Brittany, you wanna um, uh, uh, relieve me of my copal? <laughs> uh, you know, I will do my best here. 
we'll chalk that up as an oops. <laughs> the color has gotten a lot paler. Yes. Um, imagine this hasn't been liquid for <laughs> millions of years and it just liquefied on this table. It's got a big crack along the middle of it. As far as, oh, there it went. Okay, so now that we're all warmed up, we're gonna move on to our pearl. Instead of 60 seconds, I think I'm just gonna use my gemological instincts and try not to melt it. Three, two, one. All right, so let's see if we see any changes here on the surface. All right, a little bit of smokage. We're looking for some crazing here. Do we see any craze? All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna give it a little bit more direct heat here. Oop, well. and it's sooty. Well, well. all right, it smells yucky now. Um, ooh, oh, crackage. Oh, what is, oh. Uh, do you smell that? That's a yuck, that's some yuck. It smells um, like the sea, but not the good kind. It smells like seaweed. Little bubblage, little bubblage. It gurgled a little bit. All right, I'm gonna give it a little oh. bath. You wanna give it a, <laughs> a rinse? Yeah. <laughs> per se. It's, it's definitely um, a little crackly. So this pearl is kind of looking like the popcorn kernel that never popped mm. at the bottom of the bag. There's some, you know, cracks along the surface there. It's, yeah, it's definitely not as smooth and continuous in its color and texture on the surface as it, as it once was. Yeah. That was an interesting little reaction. So this is our last heat test. So we're gonna go out with a bang. This guy's been nice, but it lacks the firepower that we need. So we're graduating oh dear. and we're upgrading. So this little opal here, we're going to subject it to some extreme heat. All right, let's disengage the child safety lock slowly, engage the trigger, and away we go. Heat is very close. Oh, oh. oh. I can, what? Oh! oh. <laughs> There one There's piece. a little piece of it. I'm not touching it. There's a little piece. Oh my gosh, it blew up. Huh. Okay. Um, we've recovered <laughs> a couple pieces. What happened? The basis, I suppose, what would happen is when opal forms, a good part of its structure just has water it's molecules. A load of water, there's, yeah. there's a lot of water. And with all of the silica spheres as it forms kind of together, the combination of the heat just threw it all out of whack. And the opal said, no more. We evaporated the water on the inside of the opal and it just- More or less. Expanded and blew out violently. Okay, so we've just dealt with the heat portion of our stability tests. Yes. Let's move on to our chemical portion, yeah? Yeah. So this is a, a relatively weak acid. Again, don't try this at home. The next stone in question is peridot. So this guy is susceptible to chemical attacks. So here's what I would like to do. We're gonna drop this guy in our little beaker with a couple mils of acid. We're gonna let it marinate until the end of the episode and see if anything fun happens. Okay. Mm. Peridot in, acid in. It's a healthy pour. You might be thinking to yourself, Rob, I don't plan on submerging my peridot in a finger pour of acid. Well, there's acid in a lot of common household cleaners and some people are trying to do the right thing. They're trying to clean their peridot, give it a little spritz, wipe it down with a paper towel and that's not good. Honestly, most gemstones can be properly cleaned with just warm, soapy, soapy water. water. Anyways, so we're gonna put this on standby and uh, check up on it in a couple of minutes. Okay. Next box. Ooh. Oh, Ooh, that's it's got heavier. some heft to it. Oh, I see the heft. We have a very, oh, heavy clamp and stuff. So we're transitioning away from our stability tests and we're now getting into some hardness tests. So in gemology, hardness is defined as the ability for a material to resist abrasion from another material. This file is made of steel. Mm. Steel is strong. It's got a hardness of six to six and a half. It's not bad. It's not too bad. No. We've got calcite and aventurine quartz. Brittany, take mm -hmm. your pick. I'm gonna pick you this green one because okay. it's my second favorite color. Okay, cool. Uh, All right. Mm, All right, we're in there. All right, so go ahead and file this uh, aventurine quartz and we'll see if it feels like the file is filing the stone or if the stone is filing the file. Go for it. Yeah. Um, oh. oh. <laughs> so what is I, it? I, I feel, what does like it feel like resistance, but like smooth resistance? Smooth resistance. Which means 
And it's not working. At least the, the file isn't filing. The file ain't filing? The file ain't filing. So you're saying that this is harder than steel? Yes. Can I give it a go? Yeah. There you go. You see what Smooth I mean? resistance. Smooth resistance. Smooth resistance. That's what I'm saying. This ain't doing anything. This is a six or a six and a half mm -hmm. hardness, and quartz is a seven. Yep. So quartz is on the most scale harder than steel, but you know it's not harder than steel. What happened to be this yellow piece of calcite? Good guess. So calcite is a three. Three. So you can practically scratch it with your mm. fingernail. All right. Um, oh, you can hear it. Oh, I can see it on the underside. Oh. Mm. You are terramorphing that calcite right now. Yeah, look, look at all that calcite, which if you do a streak test, calcite's white. <laughs> <laughs> calcite streaks white. You wanna give Sure, it a I'll go. give it a go on the other side. No smooth resistance. We're, I'm definitely, ha! Ah, so you can see Brittany's test site is completely smooth, worn flat, and my little test site over here is likewise been worn smooth. Moving on to our cut gems. So we've got quartz here, which mm -hmm. is a seven, and fluorite, which is a four. Yes. So this is what would happen if your quartz jewelry came into contact with some stainless steel. Oof. It feels like it, it wants to scratch, but it's just not scratching it. Smooth resistance. Smooth resistance, yes, yeah, smooth resistance. Mm. It feels like it is, right? It feels yeah. like it, it wants to. Smooth resistance. Let's switch over to the fluorite. It's a cool piece of fluorite. That's a shame, I really love fluorite. Did you just carve a smiley <laughs> face into the table of this fluorite? I sure did. <laughs> Take a stab at it. Was it difficult to scratch? No, it was, it was so easy. Wow, it really just happens like that. This is why you have to be extra careful so with your careful. fluorite jewelry. That was very easy. It was very easy. It's very easy. So that's, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're wearing fluorite, be very careful of where you're wearing it. If you're wearing it on your fingers, it's oh, yeah. very susceptible to being scratched. If you're wearing it on a necklace, less a likely. Earrings, yeah. less, less likely. likely. Equally susceptible everywhere because yes. fluorite is only a hardness of four. It also has a poor toughness because of its very good cleavage. I am glad you mentioned fluorite's cleavage planes because mm. we cleavin'. We cleavin'? We cleavin'. Oh boy. Go ahead and open that up for me. <laughs> I wonder what's inside. Oh, it's a bicycle. So what we've got is a jeweler's block, which is mm -hmm. very dense and it's very heavy and weighty and stable. Yeah. And uh, it's not over for this fluorite. Oh, man. I'm just gonna give it a light whack bonk. Are you ready? Yeah. Don't ready. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, you, oh, it's in your lap. It's in my lap. <laughs> it's, it split right down the middle. It sure did. It's, we got oh. like two nearly perfect halves of a fluorite. Yeah, it's very. And the cleavage plane, notably, is like completely flat, which really only happens in stones with perfect cleavage. So we've got four planes of cleavage. Yes. We found one. We sure. Shall we find another? Oh, we I lost, lost our pieces. pieces. <laughs> so you can see that the cleavage planes are parallel. So a cleavage plane is a plane of atomic weakness within the crystalline structure of a gemstone. And it's important that we mention the crystalline structure because yes. if a gemstone does not have a regularly repeating crystalline structure, mm -hmm. then it's not going to cleave. It'll just break, break. randomly. <laughs> I can't be the only one with gemstone on my hands though. I'm gonna hand it off to you for the calcite. <sighs> Biscuits. We're going to be moving on from four planes of cleavage from the fluorite to three planes of perfect cleavage to the calcite. So it cleaved and okay. then it didn't. It actually makes sense. So this might be technically one whole ish piece of calcite, but it's not one whole crystal that formed by itself. So like uh, if you like, if you think of a piece of fluorite when it grows, like it grows in whole cubes itself. But yeah. this is kind of like somewhat of an amalgamation of blob. calcite. Yeah, so Calcites. it's a little bit more blobby in its formation. So it's not going to cleave as well because it's not okay. one singular piece of calcite that grew. So lastly, we've got copal. So we mentioned 
regular repeating crystal and structures mm -hmm. lending themselves to cleavage planes yes. because of their orderliness and their parallel faces and whatnot. Copal, like we mentioned earlier, is fossilized tree sap. Mm. It's Basically. amorphous. It is amorphous, exactly. Yes. So what would we expect to happen if we strike it with a uh, hammer? I would say probably granular fractures. Okay, yeah, that about checks out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fracture has no direction when it's breaking, but cleavage has, you know, a direction because it breaks along the uh, planes. So, give it a whack. Whoa! Oh my God, it's gone. <laughs> There's a good piece over here. There's a piece over here. There's a good chunk um, of it on the head of the hammer still. Okay. Uh, I may have hit it a little too hard. Well, so what happened was the copal. It blew to smithereens. You can see in the broken pieces where there were cleavage planes in the fluorite and there was like uniform breakage in mm -hmm. the calcite, there's none of that here. No, it, there's a lot of it's conchoidal just, fractures. Yeah, conchoidal fractures and yes. random breakage. So remember that peridot that we put in an, an acid bath? So we've got it here, we've rinsed it off, and it is sitting in this empty beaker now. Yes. It doesn't look too worse for wear, but I've got another peridot that was not marinating for an hour. Mm. And we're gonna do a side by side. All right, you ready? Yeah. So, okay. what kind of difference are we seeing? Um, now that I'm looking at the tables, which is the largest kind of face to look at, huh. this, this square facet here is white. I would even say vitreous. You can see easily kind of like the uh, reflectiveness of all the back facets. Yeah, you can see right through it, there. all of the light bouncing back. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very bright. <laughs> with this sad boy this right poor here, guy. this poor guy, it's still trying its best to be vitreous, but it's, uh, it's very, it's, it's very quite dull. dull. Looking at, you know, the back facets through the table, it's mm -hmm. just, it's not even like, really reflecting, it, it's almost kind of transparent in a way where you don't really see a lot of the facets. Actually, are, yeah, you kind of just see and clean through it without yeah. any uh, light bouncing through. back. Yeah, it there's just, not a lot It's of just light. transmitting right through. Yeah. Okay, well that brings us to the end of our yeah. reign of destruction. Just a quick reminder for you guys that all of these tests that we performed today are destructive anytime that these experiments are conducted. They are done in inconspicuous spots on a gemstone or with great caution under controlled environments. So if you see that torch in your cabinet, leave it in the cabinet. So if you've got any questions regarding your gemstones, those in your collection, any that you're seeking to acquire, look no further than gemstones.com. There is loads of information about the physical properties, the optical properties, the do's and don'ts of all sorts of gemstones. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Don't do anything that we did here today. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. And we'll see you in the next one.